So this morning what we're looking at is a decision tree model. Uh, a decision tree has to have uh, hyperparameters set. Either you could set them as constants or you could look for them in a tuning process. And we're going to look for them in a tuning process. So here's the setup, uh, the usual library commands, and then we have Instead of logistic regression, the model that we're specifying is a decision tree model. And it's, we're going to use the recursive partition algorithm. There are other engines that we could use. The split is exactly as it was before. And then the recipe, for now, we're going to leave it exactly as it was, but we'll take a look at this later. Okay. Then uh, here's the important part about decision tree or about uh, hyperparameter tuning. We need uh, <clears throat> more than one attempt at training and testing. What we're going to do is do a process called cross validation with folds. So setting v equal to 5 in this step means that you're going to break the training data up into five different subsets based on randomness. And each one of those five uh, subsets could play the role of a testing data set. And when we put one of the five subsets into the role of the testing data set, we're using the combined uh, results of the other folds, put them all together, and call that the training data set. So everything we try, we can try five times with sort of uh, a mini uh, training and testing actually within the training, okay? So the metric that we're using, of course, is the AUC. I don't want to pay any attention to the others. The only one I'm really interested in is the AUC. And Here's our decision tree tuning model. It's a decision tree. And here are the three hyperparameters that need to be specified. Cost complexity, tree depth, and the min n. And with each of those, <coughs> we don't specify a value. We just say that they are going to be created by the tune function. And here's the same setup we had before. The engine is uh, recursive partitioning and the modus classification. So here is the credit data tuning workflow. It's a workflow, and then we add the model, and we include the recipe object. And here's where we uh, start getting specific values for the uh, hyperparameter. We specify a grid with a size of 5. And what a size of five says that you're going to have five different combinations of the three hyperparameters. And these will be randomly selected based on uh, the prior knowledge that uh, we have of what good hyperparameters would be. This specifies a tuning workflow. We're going to start with a, a credit data tune workflow. And then here's the tune grid. Resamples is the credit data folds. The grid is what we specified as DT grid. And the metrics are credit data metrics, which really just boils down to AUC. Then we select the model, which turned out to be best. We take the DT tuning results and select the best based on the metric ROC underscore AUC. Then we finalize the workflow. And then we do the final fit with last fit. Then we look at the performance matrix, which will just be the AUC. Then we create the ROC curve. Okay, so let's just run this whole thing from the top.
Uh, first, let me clean up this stuff down here. I'll get rid of this. So we source this whole thing. And let's look to see what we got for an AUC, 0 0.760. Okay, so I'm going to try a couple different things. One thing I'm going to try, uh, <clears throat> I suspect that the logarithmic transformation really doesn't do any good because when you think about the way recursive partitioning looks at the world, it just takes each of the variables and it decides uh, where it would split that variable to get the best possible segmentation of uh, bad from good. And I don't think it matters what kind of skill, what kind of skill these things are on. Uh, as long as the transformation that you apply has the property that it's monotonic, that is a bigger input and gets a bigger output, then it should not change uh, the decisions made by the decision tree. But let's see if that uh, theory is true. Let's go back up here to the recipe. I'll we'll just comment out these two lines, 44 and 45. So we're not going to do the logarithmic transformations. We're still going to omit the rows with uh, missing values. Okay, so remember right now we've got a 0 0.760. And let's delete this junk, clean it up, and source this package again. And let's take a look. Yeah, 0 0.760. It did not matter that I took the uh, log transformation out. What happens if I take out the step underscore na omit? I'm a little bit more suspicious that that would cause some problems. And again, we'll source it. Nope, didn't hurt. What about this one? The thing that takes all of the uh, character variables and turns them into uh, numeric things. Let's take that one out. Let's see what happens. Oops. Nope. That does not work. Okay, so what else am I going to try? Well, I'm going to try as I said what this did, the size equal 5, that says we're going to five, try 5 different randomly selected combinations of the hyperparameters and see if we do any better. Well, let's step that up to 10 and let's see if we can with a more choices of hyperparameter values, can we do any better? So this is taking longer. Yeah, we did do a little bit better, 0 0.771. Let's step it up to oh, 50 and see if we do even better. taking a little bit longer. Longer, longer, longer. But let's see if stepping up to 50 did any better. Uh, no, it didn't. In fact, things went downhill a little bit. It's kind of surprising that with more things to choose from, apparently, uh, It didn't help at all. In fact, it hurt. So 10 was a good value to use. Let's go back to 10. 
Yeah, let's source it. Seven seven one. Let's actually look at the at the grid of values that it's selecting. DT underscore grid. So here are the values that it's selected. And I don't know which one turned out to be the best one. Okay, that's enough of uh, tree-based models.